Let's talk about snubber networks because I recently bought a pack of them from AliExpress and I thought it'd be worth actually covering them. And what is particularly interesting about this module is that it has a metal oxide resistor alongside the usual capacitor and resistor. And these are used to protect contacts and make life easier for things like tracks. So let me show you the schematic of this. Um, I'll just get that now and zoom into a suitable level. Like this. So the classic snubber network is usually a 100 ohm resistor and a 100 nanofarad capacitor hooked across a relay contact and it has multiple functions. Uh, when you put it across a contact, when the contact opens, you can get a slight arc drawn. That arc causes a sort of high voltage, well, it can be quite high voltage, but it causes a high frequency electrical noise across either side of the switch. And because these capacitors are very good at passing electrical noise, uh, the capacitor shunts that and it actually controls the arcing. It reduces the amount of arcing in the contact. In this instance, we've also got a metal oxide resistor. Now, the number in this is 10D471K. The 10 is the diameter. The D is disc. 471 is the voltage rating, which is 47 and 10, 470 volts. Uh, in the case of 120 volt supplies, it would be lower. But this is typical 220, 240 uh, UK and Europe type supply and China. But uh, the K at the end stands for, I believe that's the tolerance. Now, these are also useful across things like triacs because uh, when you've got the triac, well, I'll just draw in here is a triac. When you've got a triac being used to switch loads, it's useful to clamp voltage spikes across it that could cause problems. And that's what the metal oxide resistor can do. But it's also, this will have that effect of clamping transient spikes. But uh, the greater use for it with a triac is controlling the rate of voltage rise across it. Triacs are normally only rated to switch frequencies of 50, 60 hertz. And if you hit it with a what's called a high DVDT waveform, that's a change of voltage over time. So basically speaking, a spike, it can actually turn the triac on by sort of, I presume, capacitively coupling across uh, the structure internally and causing issues with that. Um, so that's where the snubber network can help. The reason there's a resistor in series of the capacitor is probably to limit the maximum current through the capacitor when it's quenching noise, but also uh, to make sure that if this is turned on, say a track is turned on or a switch is closed at the peak of the sine wave, that capacitor would be charged up fully and it could actually cause a current pulse through the switching component. And that's where that can reduce the effect of that. So these modules, um, there are a couple of failure modes. It's worth mentioning that the failure of a metal oxide varistor, a VDR, is to progressively lower in resistance as it uh, gets older. That could ultimately result in contacts being bridged. So if it was a safety issue, that's something worth keeping an eye on. And I suppose ultimately capacitors can theoretically fail in that way as well. Um, other things worth mentioning here. There was something I was going to mention. I'm trying to think what it is. One moment, please. Ah, yes. I have thought what it is. Traditionally, the snubber networks of the past were in what looked like a classic rectangular capacitor package. And inside that was basically what you see here. You'd get have a standard capacitor mounted inside that and a resistor and the leads would come out uh, this would be looped down like that and either you'd have just pins coming out or you could actually have potted wires coming out the whole lot potted in so that the unit could be dangled in the vicinity of a contactor and just tucked into the contacts where uh, arcing was causing an issue uh, but with this one you could theoretically, you could terminate your choice of wires into it and then you could put a bit of heat shrink sleeving over it and shrink it down and that would also give you a module that could actually just be dangled in a control panel to resolve technical issues. But that's a, fundamentally a snubber network in a nutshell. They're very useful circuits. Uh, they're a, pretty much a staple of industrial electrical and electronic controls. And you also find them in things like, oh, say for instance, your uh, old password infrared operated lights that uh, 
were controlled by either a track or a relay internally. And later on, you maybe you put an LED light in there and it had this residual glow, it just wouldn't turn off when the relay or the track was off. It's most likely the snubber network's in there because it passes enough current um, to actually activate LED lights and stuff like that. So you also have to keep in mind when you put a snubber network across contact that the load it's driving, say for instance it was a, a super low current load like a solenoid coil, it may it may pass enough current just to actually stop that solenoid coil just dropping out. Um, so it's worth mentioning stuff like that. But very useful things. Uh, they're absolutely an essential part of industrial control, electrical and electronic equipment.